Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, I'm looking at another monitor, but this one, I guess it probably won't appeal to everyone who watches this channel because it's a professional grade display from ASUS. We love gaming displays here at Hardware Unbox, but we also love our productivity. And for us as video editors, sometimes you need to step up to a pro grade monitor so you can do your work properly and accurately. The monitor I'm looking at today is the ASUS ProArt PA32UC-K. And before you ask, like a lot of professional monitors, it's not cheap. In fact, it costs a full $2,000 US or $3,500. Aussie. But before you complain about that eye-watering price, it could be the ultimate professional monitor. And I don't say that lightly because pro-grade monitors need to be top-notch quality to get a recommendation. Luckily, the ProArt PA32UC is packed with nearly every feature a creator might require for both SDR and HDR work. We'll get to the specs in just a moment, but this is a serious beast in terms of hardware. Before that though, big shout out to ASUS let me borrow this monitor for six weeks. That was more than nine weeks ago. So this review is a culmination of my thoughts from using this monitor for quite some time now. I wanted to see how well it would integrate into our creative workflow as content creators. And spoiler alert, it does pass a lot of tests. So the name ProArt PA32UC is pretty unassuming and doesn't really tell us anything about what this monitor is made out of. In fact, it sounds rather boring, but this is far from a boring monitor. ASUS is packed in almost every feature you could think of. It's a 32 inch 3840 by 2160 IPS panel at 60 Hertz with adaptive sync. It sports 100% sRGB color space coverage, 99.5% Adobe RGB and 95% DCI-P3 hitting all those wide gamuts. It's fully HDR compatible with a 384 zone FALD backlight. It has Thunderbolt 3 and crucially, it comes with a hardware calibration tool in the box, which makes getting accurate results a breeze for all buyers, not just those that already have calibration tools on hand. I'm not a huge fan of ASUS's gaming monitor designs, particularly for their ROG products, but the ProArt PA32UC is a completely different story. This monitor is sleek and simple with thin bezels, allowing the panel to dominate the front, a simple silver stand with a slimmer than expected pillar, and a minimalist brushed plastic rear. The display section of the monitor is quite chunky to accommodate the FALD backlight, but I reckon this beast looks fantastic front on. The stand is highly adjustable, supporting tilt, height, pivot and swivel adjustment, so you can use the monitor in a portrait orientation if you need to. The on-screen display is controlled by a directional toggle, which is great to see, and there's a ton of features professionals might find useful in there, some of which we'll discuss throughout the rest of the review. As for inputs, ASUS has gone all out, providing four HDMI 2.0 inputs, a single DisplayPort 1.2, and two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, one for input and one for output. There's also a USB 3.0 hub with two Type-A ports and one Type-C port, so yeah, there's basically every modern port on this monitor. And the Thunderbolt 3 port provides up to 60 watts of power delivery, which should be enough to charge a lot of laptops when plugged into this beast. When a professional monitor lists HDR support, I expect real HDR support, and that's exactly the case with the PA32UC. There's actually surprisingly a lot of professional monitors that don't tick every box in my monitor HDR checklist, but this one does. With a thousand nits of peak brightness, around 650 nits sustained, full array local dimming with 384 zones, near full DCI-P3 gamut coverage, and a 10-bit panel through FRC. Some professionals might be disappointed the panel isn't true 10-bit, but the FRC implementation here is actually one of the best I've seen with much, much less banding than other 8-bit plus FRC panels I've reviewed when looking at our 10-bit gradient stress test. In terms of brightness accuracy, the PA32UC gets within 10% of the exact nit target when viewing HDR content, which is a good result. The panel the panel is capable of up to 1200 nits with the window size up to 25% after which it falls back to its 650 nit sustained value. Unfortunately, the PA32UC can't produce a 1000 nit full screen flash, again topping out around 700 nits. However, the backlight's lowest level of just 0.012 nits is the lowest I've seen from an HDR monitor with local dimming. This creates a contrast ratio up to 98,000 to 1 in best case scenarios. Gamut coverage is also around 96% DCI. IP3, so the monitor is capable of displaying colors well outside a normal SDR range. 
All up, this monitor has an excellent HDR implementation among the best for HDR monitors on the market right now, again, thanks to the 384 zone FALD backlight. The low black levels are particularly impressive with the dynamic backlight. Not every aspect of the HDR implementation is perfect though. Due to the use of an IPS panel, there is a bit of glow present in some situations when only a few FALD backlight zones are enabled. In the worst case scenario, I observed a contrast ratio around 2500 to one due to this glow, but visually it's a bit ugly. Luckily, this is only a major issue when viewing thin white lines on a black background or white text on a black background. In movies or games, it's practically invisible. And for content creators not working with HDR, the default behavior is to disable the dynamic backlight. So the issue goes away completely for SDR work, though of course you can enable the feature for SDR work if you want to. I would say though that this particular HDR monitor isn't suitable for HDR gaming because the FALD backlight response is a little slow. There's a gradual fall off time of around one to two seconds for the backlight to switch off after displaying a bright image, which can cause trailing in extreme fast motion like you might get in a, say a dark fast paced shooter with bright gun flashes, for example. I'd have liked to see perhaps a faster backlight option like ASUS provides with their gaming grade PG27UQ. But from what I observed for video work, this is a non-issue. Response times for the PA32UC are typical for an IPS panel. I recorded a 7.18 millisecond greater gray average while ASUS reports 5 milliseconds. There are six overdrive modes that ASUS lists as trace free in the settings. The default 60 setting introduces a small amount of overshoot that exceeds our testing threshold, so I reduced it to 40, which cleared that problem right up. Five millisecond response times are totally within the realm of possibility at high overdrive modes, but the overshoot becomes unacceptable. In any case, an average response of 7.2 milliseconds for a non-gaming IPS display is decent. It's faster than a typical VA panel and well under the 16.6 .6 millisecond refresh window. The main issue with the PA32UC is input lag, which is very poor. At nearly 60 milliseconds of lag in our standard test mode, this monitor is the slowest I've tested, and I couldn't find an OST setting that improves upon this result. When you combine this input lag with the standard 60 hertz refresh rate, the monitor does feel a little sluggish to use. Again, considering response times themselves are still good, the issue with input lag only really impacts gaming. It didn't have any material effect on content creation work I've been doing on the panel over the last few months or watching things like TV shows or movies. Color accuracy is obviously a big part of how a professional monitor should perform, so it's great to see ASUS providing an X-Rite i1 Display Pro in the box with the PA32UC-K. This allows anyone buying this monitor to calibrate it continually over its lifespan so that it remains accurate initially and for years to come. This isn't some niche addition. In fact, in my opinion, this is the key selling point to the PA32UC. But it gets better than just having a colorimeter in the box. Through the use of ASUS's ProArt calibration software tool, you can generate color accurate profiles and save them to the monitor. This is an absolute godsend for content creators because software profiles you set within Windows can only get you so far as not every application supports or adheres to basic ICC profiles. With the PA32UC, you can basically ignore software profiles altogether and just save the profile directly into the monitor's firmware. Then you can not only use your exact calibrated profile with your main PC, but with any device you hook up to the monitor, including those that don't allow software side calibration like a Blu-ray player, game console, or say a Chromecast. The ProArt calibration software is super easy to use. You can set your color space, brightness, gamma, and white point targets. Then you just plug in the i1 Display Pro to the monitor. The tool gets to work and you can save your profile into one of the two user profile slots. Having two slots is also important because you can then have an accurate sRGB profile and an accurate DCI-P3 profile, for example, allowing you to switch between them whenever you're working with wide gamut content or not. ASUS own software isn't as accurate as SpectraCal's CalMAN 5 that we normally use for display calibration, but it still gets the PA32UC to a point that content creators should be happy with. When calibrating to sRGB, I was able to achieve a grayscale delta E below 2.0, decent enough white balance, good gamma, and both saturation and color checker delta E averages around that 1.0 mark, which is basically dead accurate. Combined with 99.5% sRGB coverage, and that's a fantastic result for color accurate work, especially as this profile is saved directly to the display itself. And you can recalibrate the monitor as many times as you like over the lifespan of the display. 
For DCI P3, calibrated results weren't quite as accurate for grayscale with a bit of wonkiness to the CCT curve. However, color performance was still very accurate with Delta E averages of 1.07 and 1.22 for saturation and color checker tests respectively. So after running the ASUS Wizard with the tool provider in the box, you can quite easily send accurate sRGB and wide gamut profiles to the monitor, which is exactly what you want from a professional grade monitor. Those who want even greater levels of accuracy, which probably isn't necessary unless you have strict Delta E standards of sub 1.0 for perfect accuracy, you can use Calman 5 to create a software profile which could be used in conjunction with the on-display profile for extreme accuracy. And as you might expect, here we were able to create a very accurate profile with essentially no issues. There are a few other reasons why having the calibration tools provided is great for buyers. There are lots of professional grade monitors out there that come with profiles calibrated at the factory, including the PA32UC, which definitely gets you part of the way there. But often these profiles come with restrictions. For example, the PA32UC's factory sRGB mode, um, there is no way to change the brightness level. You're stuck at 165 nits. Using the calibration tools allows you to set a brightness target yourself and monitor accuracy does degrade over time, so factory calibration will be less accurate a year after you purchase the monitor. Again, the included calibration tool means you can continually ensure the display is accurate. Calibration also allows you to correct errors with factory calibration. In the case of the PA32UC, the default factory sRGB mode uses a 7500K white point target rather than the correct 6500K. This is a bit bizarre for a professional monitor targeting sRGB, and if the calibration tools weren't provided, I'd definitely slam ASUS for this mistake because the factory profile is not accurate. But when the tools are there, I'd recommend, and I would even expect anyone purchasing this display for professional use, will perform a calibration after taking it out of the box, which corrects the problem and really makes it less of an issue. The final area of performance I want to look at is uniformity. Again, this is an area ASUS allows you to calibrate using their ProArt calibration software, which is unique because calibrating uniformity is often very difficult aside from these sorts of tools. Naturally, I'd recommend buyers use the uniformity calibration tool straight out of the box alongside a full color calibration. However, even with a uniformity calibration, results are a little weak for a professional grade display. It's definitely good overall, especially in the center of the display, but for a pro grade monitor, I'd want the entire screen reporting in with the sub 2.0 Delta E relative to the center. Some outer areas are up over 3.0, and I suspect this is partially down to the FALD backlight. Getting an even result out of this sort of backlight is certainly quite tricky. I guess the disappointing thing here is uniformity is actually worse for this monitor compared to the gaming grade Acer Predator X27, which also uses a 384 zone FALD backlight. That monitor also features better factory calibration, though it doesn't support some of the calibration features I've been talking about throughout this review, so it's probably not suitable for most professionals. So at the start of this review, I talked about the PA32UC as the ultimate professional monitor, and that's for a couple of reasons. This display provides pro-grade calibration features with the tools you need provided in the box, combined with high-end display hardware, particularly for HDR. The PA32UC provides everything you need for accurate sRGB work, accurate wide gamut work, and HDR work. And it's not fake HDR, we're talking genuine, full-blown HDR with great brightness, elite contrast, and proper color support. ASUS is doing this with a 32-inch display, which right now is unique. There are some pro-grade 27-inch HDR monitors with a similar feature set, like Dell's UP2718Q, but at a smaller size, and I tend to think 32 inches is a bit better for 4K work. Right now, the UP2718Q is cheaper though, so it is something to consider. Those looking for just an entertainment or gaming display with HDR shouldn't opt for the PA32UC, though that should be obvious considering this ProArt display is targeting professionals, not gamers. The Acer Predator X27 provides a similar feature set with great factory calibration and a higher 144Hz refresh rate with G-Sync HDR for the same price as the PA32UC. Those who want to do both creative work and gaming on the One Display should also opt for the X27 in my opinion, unless you know professional work is really what you want the monitor for. But if you're in the market for a proper 32 inch HDR display for content creation, productivity, or other professional work, I definitely recommend the PA32UC and I've been loving using this for my video production workflow over the last weeks and months. That's not to say it's perfect, 
Input lag is a concern. Uniformity isn't quite where I'd want it to be despite the uniformity calibration feature. The factory calibrated profiles are a little off and contrast without the dynamic backlight enabled is only a mere 700 to one when calibrated. But most of these issues are only minor for productivity work. Of course, the final question is whether you should spend $2,000 on a monitor because that certainly sounds like a lot of money. However, most pro-grade monitors start at around the $1,000 mark, so when you put that in perspective, the $2,000 price of this 32-inch 4K panel with proper HDR doesn't sound as outrageous, unlike the gaming-grade PG27UQ, which is more than triple the price of a good gaming display. Dell's 32-inch 4K non-HDR wide gamut professional-grade UP3216Q is $1,400 US dollars, for example, and that price goes up by $260 if you want the color calibration tool included with it. So that kind of gives you an idea of where the PA32UC sits, and for $2,000, it's certainly not an outrageous price. Anyway, the PA32UC has been great for my workflow and the performance numbers, included calibration tool and hardware capabilities of this panel just add to the package. That's it for this review. Let us know what monitors you want us to check out in the comments below. We're always looking for suggestions as there are so many monitors out there on the market. Consider subscribing for more monitor content. We have a Patreon page as well where you can access uh, our exclusive Discord chat through there, and I'll catch you in the next one.